our families. We say thank you, Lord. Raise our attention, citizen. Thank you because you load us with daily benefits. We say thank you, Lord. Marisa Tonsha Risa Eleza Tonsha. Anze tita tita tata 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 mazon toshenta hereza tonsheke gaga 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 maruzo tonsheke reza di da 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 elebuzon toshenta kariza gaga gaga mariza tonsha katin kazin te gaga gaga hereza tonshenta kazin se gaga 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 malibuzo tonsha hereza tonsheke reza di shagazi gazi gaga gaga maruzo tonsheke reza di da 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 eleza ta hezen toshenta hereza tonsheke gaga gaga our redeemer will say thank you Lord reza Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for March. Thank you for April. We say thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for July. We say thank you for August. And thank you in advance for the remaining months of the year. Because you are God. Thank you for God. Communicate with your maker this morning from your spirit to his spirit, Lord. Breathe upon this service this morning. Breathe upon this service this morning. From my spirit to your spirit, Lord. Let's deep call on to deep this morning. In the name of Jesus, Reza Dozo, Ekali Gazenta, Ejadi Lakaka, Maruzo Tonshi. We lay all weight aside. We lay all aside. We lay all aside. In the name of Jesus, every weight we lay distraction aside. Rika zonto shinka da da. Rika da 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 da. Rosa to shinka da da. Arisa da 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 da. We look unto you, Lord. We look up to you, Lord. We look up to you, Lord. Arisa to shinka da da da. Rika zonto shinka da da. Arisa da da da. Because you are reliable. Because you are dependable. Rika ta sa da da. In wonder, you are the multiple supply, never exhausted. We give you all the glory, Lord. You are reliable. Our confidence is in you, Lord. The works of your hand glorify your name this morning. We, the works of your hands, glorify your name. Zanta libo zonto shenka kaka Ereza tesha Ereka zenta Elebo zonto shenta Arika ta zenta kalibu rozo tonsha Ereka zenta kalikaraka Roka kaka zonde kaka Raka zonto shenka We commit this service unto your hands In the name of Jesus From the opening prayer to the end of the program You will take charge You will take charge We invite you Holy Spirit To take total control In the name of Jesus Ereza to shenka we trust you, O Lord. We trust you, O Lord. Our confidence is in you, Lord. The situation in the world will not make us to distrust you. We trust you, Father. Because you are helping. When you speak a word, you stand by it. You stand by it to bring it to pass. The ageless one, the ageless one. We exalt your name. Miraculous God, when you speak, everything obeys in the name of Jesus. When you speak, everything adjusts. The I am that I am, the great I am, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. We enthrone you in this place. We lift you high. We lift you high. The King 
of kings, the horrors of Sharon. We join the 24 elders to enthrone you this morning. We say thank you, Marika Zandabalakashonda. We lift you higher, Barakatasadayana. Renga Worship your maker from your heart this morning and raise your heart in prayer to him. We thank you because you are going to do what no man can do. 
We thank you because you are going to do what no man can do. You are the unchangeable. You are reliable. Reliable, reliable God. Yes, Lord. Reliable, reliable God. You are unchangeable, unchangeable, unchangeable God. Hey. Unchangeable, unchangeable God. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you because you are going to do what we more than what we ask for today in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We exalt your name. We exalt your holy name. Oh, Madakalaka. Begin to thank God for answers prayers this morning and begin to exalt him, Lord. Thank him for answers prayers. Thank him for answers prayers. You is a changeable God. He's so reliable. Our confidence is in him because when he speaks a word, he will stand by it to bring it to pass. We say thank you, Lord, for being our God. Thank you, Lord, for being I am that I am. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Marisa, oh, you are unchangeable, God. We say thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, because you will outdo yourself. You will outdo yourself in our midst this morning. Thank you, Father, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands this morning in worship of the Most High God. Mansi Intari Handus Gonto Rehundu, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. Father, we give you praise this morning. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name, Lord. Mansi Intari Handed, for there is none like you. No one compares to you, O God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? Do you have your dancing shoes? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Destroy. I'm blessed beyond the cause. 
that he leaves in the heavens and makes the whole earth his footstool. He is the same God that is so small that he leaves in our hearts. For all he has done, for all he is doing right now, and all he is going to do, we say thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise this morning. As we 
the biggest You are stronger, stronger than the strongest You are higher, higher than the highest You are greater, greater than the great You are bigger, bigger than the big hey, Stronger than the strong to the most I go, the one who never fails, the one who never fails, the one who says a thing and packs it up when everything is God. Manza zika di hantu su comprehende de 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 boa. Manziza za 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 za. The one who is beautiful for situation, the one who is too marvelous for words. Oh, Mary hantu su terehende de 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 de. Our refuge, our strong tower. very present help in time of need. The one who never leaves us, who never forsakes us, the one who keeps us. It's only you that we see. We don't 
It's you we see, Father God. It's you, Papa God. It's you we see, Father God. It's you that we see, Father God. It's you that we see, only you. At the center of it all, it's you. It's you. It's you, it's you. It's you. It's you. It's you Baba God. No one but you. No one but you, Baba. No one but you, Father God. It's you we see. Baba God. In the midst of it all, it's you we see, Father God. Riando suke lianda ba. Ziyatu kaliaso. Ekde do asata, Baba, Baba, Baba. We see you, Father God. Yeah, ba shikere, Baba, Baba. Mo shikere, Baba, Baba. Sikere, Baba, Baba. Zuzu, 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 zuzu. Beyond the upheavals, it's you that we see, oh God. It's you, it's you. Beyond the pandemic, it's you that we see, oh God. Beyond the disruptions, it's you that we see, oh God. We see nothing else but you. We see nothing else, no one else but you, Baba God. And we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Because only you are God. <laughs> Only you are God. Besides you, there is no other. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you worship this morning. We exalt and we magnify you. Because your word tells us that the Lord our God in the midst of us, he is mighty. Thank you because you are mighty in our midst this morning. Thank you because you are mighty to save. Thank you because you are mighty to deliver. Thank you because you are mighty to heal, Baba God. We give you praise. The Father of Spirit, the Father of Light, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you for your word this morning, Lord God Almighty. Thank you because you will confirm your word with signs and wonders and miracles, Baba God. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. For in Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen. Why don't you give him a wave offering for he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. What a wonderful time of worship. What a wonderful time of worship. You can have your seat in his presence. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You are welcome to church this morning. I'm sure you can tell somebody beside you that you're welcome to church this morning. <laughs> we didn't say you should shake <laughs> Shake each other. <laughs> You're welcome to church this morning. And Jesus is in the house. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says where two or more are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of them. So he's here this morning. And guess what? He's here to do us good. He's here to do us good. I, I, I've been reading a lot about his word. His word being confirmed. Amen. With signs and wonders. Amen. Anytime the word of God is being preached, you should expect signs and wonders. I think that's one of the reasons why we, we, we don't see it. I've said it before. That why, why you see a lot of miracles in um, crusades is because people go there with an expectation. Do you know where there is a crusade? You go there with an expectation. You go, most people that go there have something that they are going to resolve with God. They go there with an expectation. There is a build up. There is a build up. I remember my pastor in those days saying that there was a day that um, one of these big men of God, I think 
Zion was born. One of those ones who came to Nigeria in those days. Uh -huh. I think one of the days he came, of course, he, they had printed handbills. They had done so many things. And you should have seen the Christ that he had preached the word. Now said, God is telling him that um, those people who are deaf in one ear, I can't remember whether he still was born, but one of them, that God is telling him that the people that are deaf in one ear, they are going to receive their hearing. I mean, he didn't even say two ears. He said just the people who are deaf in one ear are going to receive their hearing. They said as soon as he said that, somebody in front said, I received my sight. Somebody said, I received my, my healing. Somebody said, do you know why they could receive that? They came with an expectation. So it was immaterial what T.L. Osborne said. If a T.L. Osborne could have said there was not going to be healing and there would have been healing. Hallelujah. So it's your expectation. It's not in the hands of God. God's power is always present to heal. Amen. God's power is always present to heal. It's always present to deliver. But your expectation matters. What are you expecting from God? He says he goes forth confirming his word with signs and wonders. So it's your expectation. What are you going to pull from the word of God this morning? Amen. You know that woman with the issue of blood? She didn't care. I love that woman. She, she didn't care. She came with, to God with an expectation. And I like you to come to church with that kind of expectation. Where you're saying that, I don't care what pastor is preaching today. This is what I need and this is what, this is what I will get. Amen. I remember in those days, my son, when my son was a baby, he didn't used to eat. In fact, I, I doubt if there is a child that doesn't eat now that can face me. I've said it before. My son didn't used to eat at all. As in, it was prayers. It was... My, my husband was tired. As soon as I just heard that someone is a pediatrician or someone is a doctor, I would, just, I would make sure he doesn't see me. I quickly go and say, what can we do? And they kept on telling me the same thing. that eh, If they don't eat... Yes, they will eat eventually. How do you tell a mother that they will eat eventually? So, do you know, I, I think it was um, uh, Pastor Crefodola that came. Fortunately, my husband didn't go. He had left before us. He went before us because he wanted to sit right there in front. So, I think the meeting was for like eight. My husband had left by four. So, I knew there was no chance that we would be in the same place. So, Crefodola now came and he now said... Um, those who have um, issues, they should come. I took my son forward. And I was looking out for my husband because I can imagine him. <laughs> because when they said someone who had issues, you know, who had sicknesses and diseases, ah, for me, that was the issue. Ah, it was an issue for me because it was, he was as thin, he only had head. That was what we had. You see him, and you could count the bones on his body. And they all kept telling me that, ah, don't worry, he will eat. Don't worry, he will eat. And he wasn't eating. All the doctors were telling me the same thing. I, I said, let me not wait for this week. When he came and he said, those of you who had uh, challenges, I, I can't even remember. It was sickness, he called. I knew that he wasn't sick. But this was what was troubling me. I took him out. Hallelujah. So it's the expectation you come to church with. You see, you can get exactly the same kind of results at a, at a, at a, at a miracle crusade. If you come to church saying that today I am going to church and this sickness you have to die. So it's dependent on you. You are saying I'm going to, just like that woman with the issue of blood who said, mm -mm, I'm not going to take it. Whatever it will take today, when I touch the helm of his garment, I am going to be healed. She didn't observe protocol. Well, others, I'm sure there were others touching Jesus and saying, ha, look at his garment. I was so close to him. If it were these days, there would be people who would take selfies. But that woman didn't have any other business. She told herself that this is what I am going for. Come to church with an expectation. Don't come to church. There should be signs and wonders and miracles following his word. Every time you come to, you can believe God that every time I come to church, every time I gather with people in church, something should happen. Amen. Something should happen. Something should change. Something about me. Something about my situation 
should, be, should change, should shift, should adjust. Because this word we are preaching is the word that holds the world. Hallelujah. And the world has not fallen. The world is suspended by his word. <laughs> and it has not, you know they say if it's, if the world, the earth rather, tilts just a little bit, it will be too hot. Or it tilts just a little bit, it will be too cold. And this world, the word of God is still just suspending it at the right space. It hasn't tilted one day. No, no matter, some people say the world is very, the earth is 6 billion years old, or even if it's 6,000 years old, there is nothing holding it and it's just standing. <laughs> Imagine what that power can do in your life. That power, that word can do in your life. That word can, that, that can hold this earth. Nothing is, nothing is holding it up. Nothing is holding it down. So come to church with an expectation. Come to church that when I hear the word today, even if it's going this way, you know you can, this is not my message, you can pull God's power with your faith. You can pull God's power with your faith. Jesus was going in a particular way. That woman said no. No. He was going to heal somebody else. That woman said in her heart, no. This is what I want. And this is what I will get. Amen. She came with an expectation. That's why I keep saying that when you come to church and you're still looking around and other things, that you don't have something you are coming for. Amen. Have you seen a woman who wants a child before? A woman who desires a child. We had a friend when we lived in Abba. She, she, she had been married maybe like six years and she didn't have any children. When she told us some of the things they said she, could, she should take, I said, what? Snail, you, do you know snail? They told her, whoever was this, Angoma or whatever, or the prophet told her to break it and drink that slimy water. She drank it with, with pleasure. There's somebody who wants something. She, she was desperate. She wanted it, and there was nothing else. I wish you could approach God that same way. That same way that God, this thing has to change. God, something has to move. God, something has to shift. Don't just come to church because it's Sunday. You come to church with an expectation. As you are leaving home, you are coming. I'm telling you, when we begin to come to church, that Sundays will be different. Church will be different. You are coming that I am coming. Imagine if you had an appointment with um, President Ramaphosa. Some of us, you, you would be prepared. You would have changed your clothes like how many times? You will start preparing for five times. Thank you, my baby. Some will even be more. You will prepare how you will sit. You will prepare how you will talk to him. You will prepare how everything about you will be geared, approach God that way and see if things don't change. Approach that, God that way that I, I, I am going to meet with the king of kings. I am going to meet with this person who holds my hand, my life in his hands. If he does like this, that's it. Remember that, um, that rich man that said, I have built my bands. I, I have, I have, I have. And he said, I'm just going to sit back, relax. I'm going to chill out. And I'm just going to enjoy it. And Baba God said, today, that is the father you are coming to meet with. Shouldn't you prepare? Shouldn't you prepare? A God that can change situations and circumstances in a matter of seconds. Sometimes it's frightening. <laughs> I was saying during prayers on Friday that somebody called me just before that prayers. She had an interview. This interview she was supposed to um, she was supposed to teach online. She had an interview with this American. For the first time, her 
in between the, the um, interview, um, her Wi-Fi just went off. Ah, it froze. It had never happened. Okay, so you are doing an interview that you are going to be teaching online. So obviously, they were expecting that your computer should be sharp, sharp. When they managed to revive the computer, as they were talking again, went off again. And she's talking to an American who doesn't understand that Wi-Fi goes off. Or that sometimes electricity is switched off. So they ended the interview like that. So the lady now sent her an email and said, maybe we can continue. Unfortunately, by the time the lady sent her the email, she had even given up. She had called me and said, ah, <laughs> interview is over. So by the time, she now said, by the time the lady sent her an email, she was already in the children's school to go and pick her, up her children when the email came. And the email said, so, so time. That time, she was already in her children's school. So she picked up the children, she rushed back home. And saying the woman, I wasn't at home. Don't, how does this sound to you? If you are an interview, how does this sound to you? You're already sounding very incompetent. And the lady said, okay, we, we need to, uh, okay, please, can we do it in 15 minutes when I get home? The lady said, okay. They started the interview again online. The um, Wi-Fi went off again. You know the woman actually called her. I said, I'm giving you the job. <laughs> she had told me before the woman called her that this is the worst interview I've ever attended before. I didn't even get to show off my skills. I didn't get to all the things I had rehearsed. All the things, you know, when you want to talk to an American, now you practice. All the things that she had practiced. She didn't get to show it off. And the woman, the woman even said, it's your determination that I like. That you kept trying. You kept trying. That's all. It shows me that whatever comes your way, you will try. And she was given the job. That's the God that we serve. There's nothing like an obstacle in front of you. In fact, your obstacles are your opportunities. Hallelujah. For him, obstacles are opportunities. Amen. We have been studying the book of Esther. And we found out that obstacles are actually our opportunities. Amen. No matter what God brings our way, what comes our way, God can use them as stepping stones to greater things for you. In fact, most times our opportunities are packaged as obstacles. Most times. If there's no challenge, you can't move forward. If there's no exam, you can't pass to the next class. Amen. That's why I don't like that idea of they just uh, take a child to the next class. They push the class. That's why those children don't do well. There has to be a test before you go higher. Amen. So that the obstacles are on your way. They... I started that week when I preached two weeks ago. By saying that in that book of Esther that we are studying, there is no mention of God. It's the only book in the Bible where there is no mention of God. In fact, I checked again. There's no mention of prayer as such. There was fasting, but there was no prayer. But if you read that book of Esther, please go and read it. From, it's just from chapter 1 to chapter 10. In fact, the last chapter is only like three verses. The whole book of Esther, there is no mention of God. But if you want to see the hand of God, Read that book of Esther. So sometimes it looks like God is not in a situation. It looks like he's not in that circumstance. Meanwhile, he's orchestrating things from behind. He's shifting and he's moving and he's adjusting. One of the greatest things I learned about the book of Esther was about timing. Mm. God is not a God of time, but he's a God of timing. He's a God of timing. He is a, in fact, in that chapter one, ah, shata barunda kasiya laba, meskere diada ba, meskere ba. May you understand time. You you didn't hear me. May you understand time. May you understand the timings in your life. In that chapter one, they actually said he went to consult with the people who understood time. There's 
a timing for you. Sometimes it, it seems that this thing is taking so long. It seems it's taking so long. But there's a timing. And when the time is right, it will be like magic. You know, there are things that you've struggled for. And then when the thing comes into place, you look at it and say, ah, ah, is this what I've waited for for so long? This is it. God is a God of timing. One of the things you learn most in that book is it's timing. How things just fall into place. In fact, it was said that it was said that from chapter 1 of Esther to chapter 4 took about 9 years. From chapter 1 of Esther where the king paraded, where she was taken, it took about 9 years. But from chapter 5 to almost chapter 8, it took like 24 to 48 hours. <laughs> All that preparation. From chapter 1 to chapter 4, chapter 1 is where the king decided he wanted a wife. Chapter 2 is where Esther was taken. Chapter 3 is um, Haman. The, the one who kept, um, who wanted to kill Mordecai. Chapter 4 is where Esther approached the king. From chapter 1 to chapter 9, go and read it, uh, to chapter 4. It took about 9 years. But from the time that Esther approached the king, go and read it very well. It was like, it was like, it just started falling into place. You have been wondering, where was God from 1 to 9? 1 to 4. What happened? Where was he? He was there. But he was orchestrating things from behind the scenes. There are times in our lives, ah, haven't you cried to God, God, where are you? Ah, where are you? I, I don't know about you because I've had situations where I've said, where in your eyes, where are your eyes? Because I cannot seem to see it. It seems you are not even, but he's always there. Tell your neighbor he's always there. Tell your neighbor he's always there. Do you know he says he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's always there. You don't see him, but he is there. Hallelujah. He's always there. From that time, from that verse, it took 48 hours. For things to just start changing, changing, changing. Until Mordecai, who used to wear rags and stand outside, became someone who rode on the king's horse and was wearing a robe and people were hailing him. What a mighty God we serve. Ah, ah, he just turned. Can you imagine God's timing? It was just because the king couldn't sleep at night. That's why he was just tired. He said, ah, what can I do? You know when you can't sleep, what can I do? Then they had to bring a book to him. And the book just happened to open to that place for Mordecai to be remembered. Ah, you will be remembered for good this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the book of remembrance will be opened concerning you. Amen. Some of you, you've done some things in the past and you've thought it's gone. No. In, in fact, when I was reading it, God was saying that, uh, you, is it not payback? Not payback. What was that word that came to my mind? Paid in full. Something like that. Yes. That they are going to package it and give it to you. Hallelujah. You don't worry about it. They are going to package that money together and give it to you. You think you have been cheated? No. Nobody can cheat a child of God. Nobody. Go and read what, um, what um, Haman's wife said to him. He said, if the, the person you are pursuing is a Jew, is a child of God, ah, you have started your own destruction. Nobody can destroy you. Anybody that will try it will fall for your sake. That's it. He said, no. If that person is a Jew, know that you have started your own destruction. Your own destruction. You have dug your own grave. If he's a child of God, then somebody in your office is saying what not. Just tell them, I'm sorry for you. Because you do not know this God that I serve. 
Just tell them I'm sorry for you. Don't argue. Don't fight. You know, Mordecai didn't fight. He didn't argue. He, he, you'll be fighting. You'll be fretting. And hey, this person, oh, is this person somewhere? That's why we get in trouble. Relax in God. Let God fight your own battles for you. Don't be like other people. Let God fight your battles for you. Just relax. Let him fight your battles for you. One of the greatest things, one other thing I learned in that book is relationships. Relationship. Esther was Mordecai's cousin. An older cousin. So let's say an uncle. You know, even in Africa, you know, everybody is, in fact, is your father, even. In fact, I remember my children these days, when, especially my husband, when my husband says, this person is my cousin, my children will say, which, which, because we know your brothers and your sisters. So how is this person your cousin? Because everybody is my husband's cousin. I tell them that that's the Yoruba culture. So long as you are related, you are cousins. In fact, if you grew up in the same neighborhood, you are cousins. You are, you are my brother. <laughs> I remember when my husband introduced one Igbo guy. The Igbo guy is actually related to me. Sincerely. My husband introduced him to somebody else as his cousin. I think the person said, how? <laughs> really, doctor? <laughs> Chidima is your cousin. <laughs> Chidima. <laughs> but sincerely, the guy is actually related to me. His mother married an Igbo man, so, and the mother is related to me. So, talking about relationships, one of the things I learned is that, ah, may you never lack man. You see, we take men for granted. <laughs> and when God will use, when God wants to change your life, he'll send you a man. Do you know that? We take each other for granted. There is no coincidence. You don't know anybody by coincidence. There's something that you're supposed to do for each other. We take each other for granted so much. I was listening to a man of God, and he said something that was profound to me. He said, if you are a human being, and God forbid you get into trouble. Maybe you need money. And there is nobody you can call to say that no matter what happens, if I call on this person, this person will answer me. He says you are in trouble. You should have people like that. Seriously. And you should be like that to somebody else. You should not be that person. God forbid you get into trouble and there is nobody to call on. Ah. God forbid. You don't have anybody you can say that. Even if this person has to sell her gold ring, she will help me. Ah, you're in trouble. Because God uses men. There is, why, why we are together, there is a reason and there is a purpose. I go back to that story of that man that was by the pool of Bethesda. What did he say? He said, I have no man. So a man could have helped him. But it was because he didn't have. It was because he didn't have anyone. Thank God for the mercies of God that Jesus showed up. Could have stayed there forever. And the people that had men, they will push them in and they will be healed. Ah, may you never lack men. You didn't hear me. May you never lack men. You see, the positions you want to get to is someone that will take you there. The monies that you are needing is people that will get you there. I read about that um, man in Luke that his friend said this guy has to be healed. Do you have friends like that? That we say Jesus is in the house. We are going to carry you there by force by tulas. They removed do you have friends like that? That can remove the rooftop to say that I will make sure you get to where you are supposed to be. May you never lack men. You didn't hear me. May you never lack men. You need relationships. We take our relationships for granted. Meanwhile, it could be a word that someone would speak to you. It could be a phone call that someone would make. It could be an idea that will take you to where you ought to be. Don't take people for granted. Don't ever, ever, ever take people for granted. There are 
are some people you don't know that that is your that is your miracle packaged. When we were we need to round up on this. When we were fixing our papers, when we first came, we had had so many challenges. So many challenges with our paper. If you're a foreigner, you will know that. We had had so many, we had paid monies, we had done. In fact, my husband had had to go back to Nigeria to fix his paper and come back. I had to go out of the house to go and stay with my sister because they had told us that immigration would come and they gave us 72 hours to get out of the country. My husband came back. He had fixed it for a while. They gave him maybe a year or whatever. So within this one year, we were trying to fix this paper again. <laughs> so the, we now contracted a white immigration lawyer. Because you know us, how we see that. White immigration lawyer. Ah, ah. Haba. He knows his, he knows his stuff. Ah, the devil is a bad lab. <laughs> we had paid white immigration lawyer monies. In fact, we were paying him bit by bit. We were barely eating at home. Last minute, white immigration lawyer says he's going into politics, so he cannot handle our situation anymore. Ah. We have been paying you. At least you will complete this one that you are doing. And mean, mean, he's not returning the monies we have paid him. He just said he's going into politics. I think he gave my husband his file back. <laughs> <laughs> that was this big. He gave it back to him and said, he's not even saying, let me hand this over to somebody else. I mean, uh, he just gave us back our file. I said, okay, good luck, rest of me. That means God, God help you. So my husband was tired. I was, I had prayed, uh, <laughs> I had prayed, hey, known and unknown scriptures. One day, I don't know where my husband said he was. This young guy on the streets of Joburg. No, one guy called my husband and said, these papers that you have done, I know one guy that can help you fix your papers. He now said he's so, 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 so person. Meanwhile, my husband had treated that person at one point in time. My husband didn't remember him. So when this guy who introduced him to my husband came, the guy now brought this guy to my husband. My husband, when he said, when he saw him, he said, like, really? You don't understand. White immigration lawyer has done this thing and could not fix it. So is this young boy on the street. You know those agents on the street. He's, I'm not sure if he has a company. He doesn't have card. He's not dressed in a suit. The guy said, you know what, Dr. Shogun, I am not going to take a dime from you. When I finish this thing, you give me. That's what he said. How many months did it take us to get our... In fact, before I knew it, I was sitting in front of the immigration office. They were doing an interview. Guy on the streets. White immigration lawyer tried it all. For months. Don't take people for granted. Never, ever, ever, ever. Don't take people for granted. Don't take people for granted. Don't take... He uses people. It's people he will use. So when you have disdained them, how? How will you be helped? Some of those cries, you are crying and crying and crying. It's because God has opened your eyes to the person and you have refused to see the person. That's it. The most unexpected places. God can raise up all for you, but he will use people. He will use people. He will use people. Be a good person to people. Be a good person to people. Let me tell you something. You see favor. I found out that when they are talking about favor, go and read your Esther very well. Favor, what comes, what follows favor so closely is honor. What follows favor so closely? If you want favor to increase in your life, like Esther did, Honor. Learn to honor people. Learn to honor people. Don't, don't, whether old, young, it doesn't matter. Learn to honor people. Some of us, the way I have on my children these days, if you want favor to increase, increase your honor. 
I told you there was a day, the Holy Spirit actually, normally when I'm preaching about someone, if it's not a pastor that I know, I will call them by name. I'll say like Trefu Dollar. Eh. The Holy Spirit actually told me that when I'm, even when I don't know the person, I should put a thing before the person's name. That I'm showing dishonor by doing that. Maybe it was for me personally. But there are things that God has shown you that way as well. That don't do that. Don't do that. If you want favor to increase in your life, I'm telling you, go and check your life of honor. Don't ever take people for granted. Don't ever. You know, pastor, you know, pastor, you can touch his nose like this. <laughs> the Bible says that it is if you put him in his place, that's why his blessings will be upon you. If you don't do that, you won't get it. Some people are in company of great men, like Lazarus. And what did he get? Nothing. Nothing. Do you know that there were people desiring to see that rich man the way Lazarus was seeing him? Do you know there were people? There were people who could not approach him. I'm sure there must have been a reason why he was allowed to be staying there every day and every night. He was in the company of greatness and he didn't get anything out of it. You can be in the company of the, the person that will take you to your next level. If you don't honor that person, you won't get there. If you want favor to increase in your life, big or small, learn to honor people. Learn to respect people. Learn to put people. Know that this is, you should go out with the discipline that I don't know whether this is the person that God will use for me today. You know, if you have that in mind, you will treat that person differently. You will treat the person differently. If you know that this is the person, and you never know, you never know who God is going to use. Learn to honor people. Learn to honor relationships. For some of us, you, the people you went to primary school, they can still bless you. It's years ago, but they can connect you to someone who will connect you to someone. Rise to your feet this morning. I say this and I'm always going to say it. That whenever a message is being preached, for the next minute or so, just close your eyes and ask yourself, what do I need to change? What shifts have to occur? What adjustment do I have to do? Where am I getting it? Where am I not getting it? You need to always have that when a message is being preached. Because the message will be of no effect to you. If you are not telling yourself, what do I need to do? Where do I need to change? It might just be one adjustment I need to make. Of all that I have said today, what do I need to do? What shifts have to occur? And make up your mind that I will do it. The Bible says it's the one who works in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He will help you. He will help you get there. He will help you do it. He will help you get there. Thank you, Father God. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. <laughs> give him praise because you may not see him. Even in this pandemic, he's shifting. <laughs> he's working things. He's adjusting things for your good. <laughs> when the timing was right, it would just be one after the other. Things would just be falling in place. It, it, it would be like magic. Just thank him. Thank him. The, the time is almost there. Just thank him. Things are happening. You think they are not, but they are. They are, they are happening. They are happening. They are happening. So give him praise. It looks like, oh, it's been taking forever. Ah, uh ah. -uh. No, don't worry. It, it, it's going to come into place. One, two, three. It, 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 it will be to your amazement. Ha, ha. Hey, It will be to your amazement. It will be to your amazement. It will be to your amazement. To your amazement. He's working it out. He's working it out. My God, he's working it out. Hallelujah. He's working it out. Give him praise this morning. The God of providence, give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. 
Let's package our offerings as we give him praise. The Bible says, give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Men will give unto your bosom. Hallelujah. This week, men will give to your bosom. Women will give to your bosom. He says he gives seed to the sower. This week, you will receive seed. Hey, hey. You will receive seed like never before. In the name of the Lord Jesus. My God will meet you at the point of your needs. You won't lack. You won't lack. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You won't lack. You won't lack. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Remember the building offerings. Remember your tithes too. You are giving your tithes. You will not be disappointed. It's a, it's a decision between you and God. Nobody should force you. It's, it's just you and God. It's a covenant between you and him. And you know he's not a covenant breaker. <laughs> he will surprise you pleasantly in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we give our offerings cheerfully. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know go back for bread. Oh. I know go suffer. I know go back for bread. Oh. Go suffer. I know go back for bread. Oh. I know go suffer. I know go back for bread. Oh God of miracles. Suffer. I don't go back for bread, oh. Go suffer. I don't go back for bread, oh. I don't go suffer. I don't go back. Oh, God of miracles. Declare it. God of miracles. We say God of miracles. God of miracles. God of miracles. The one who does wonders. your hands towards this offering and speak concerning it. God's word has already been said concerning giving. So it will be given back unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Seed will come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will know no lack in the name of the Lord Jesus. All your needs will be met. Every need will be met in the name of the Lord Jesus. When you go out this week, is to meet with blessings in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will meet with the right people. Your steps will be order you to the right place in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Let us speak concerning our week. I want you to declare concerning this week. Just like we have heard, God is a God who orders our steps, that we will be at the right place at the right time. We will meet with the right people this week in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please speak to your week. This week will be my best week ever. Doors will be opened unto me. I will be on at the right place at the right time. Every need that comes up this week is met in the name of the Lord Jesus. Every, every need is met in the name of the Lord Jesus. This week we are supernaturally protected. This week we are supernaturally provided for.